All right, so this is continuing from yesterday's notes. Get my calculator out. So we're just gonna go back to the ones that we skipped. Most of these, well, I, I'll, so I'll jump back and forth between calculator base and non-calculator base. Something like 14 would be calculator base because you need the calculator to do that. So how do, what do I rewrite LN as? Log base E, and then this has one log on one side of the equal sign, so I convert it into exponential. Yep. Rewrite it as log base E of X, the E comes over and picks up the squared, and then the answer. Without a calculator, you could get that far. But this would be on the calculator, if something like this would be on the calculator part portion, and then you would just do e to the x. I mean, e to the second. Where's the e? So 7.389. And then because it's technically a log at the beginning, you want to check it, right? You want to check to make sure that if I plug that back in, you're not trying to find log of a negative or zero. And it's not, so it's fine. I get to keep that answer. 15, we've got one log on either side of the equal sign. So what do we do here? Mm-hmm. Good. So the one-to-one -one property tells us if it's the same log, one log on either side of the equal sign, we can cancel it out. And then leave what's left. 4x minus 1 equals 7. Add the 1. 4x equals 8. Divide by 2. And Do I divide by 4? And x is 2. We need to check this though, right? So we plug it back in here and here, making sure that what's in the parentheses is gonna be greater than zero. So if I plug in the two here, I'd get 10 minus one, which is nine, that's fine. Plug in the two here, I get nine and that's fine. So again, you keep that answer. Yep. Every time the original equation starts with a log. So not when they're exponential, not when it's like e to the x, but if they, a log or an ln, because ln is log. All right, 17 and 18 we skipped. 17 is again one to one, one log on either side of the equal sign. So 2x minus three would equal x plus four. Subtract the x. x minus three equals four. Add the three. x is seven. Check it. If I plug it back in here, I get 14 minus three. That's positive, that's fine. Seven plus four would be 11, that's fine. So I keep it. These all haven't, like the, the last three, you haven't used your calculator. So these would be more like on next week's part. 18, you've got two logs on one side and one on the other. So what are we going to do with the two logs on the left? Good. Condense them. It's a minus, which means what? Divide 4x over 12 plus x equals log 2. Now it's one to one, so I ignore the logs. I get 4x equals 12 plus x equal, I'm sorry, 4x over 12 plus x equals 2. I can multiply both sides by the 12 plus x. These cancel. 4x would equal, distribute here, 24 plus 2x. Subtract the 2x. 2x would equal 24. Divide by 2. And x is 12. Check it. So if I plug 12 back in here, it's positive. Plug 12 back in here, that's positive. So I get to keep the answer. Questions on that one. Okay, 20. What are we gonna do first? Good, subtract the seven. Three L and X would equal negative two. Then I got to get that log by itself or the ln by itself, right? So I'm going to divide both sides by 3. ln of x equals negative 2 thirds. One log, change it to exponential. So that's log base e of x equals negative 2 thirds. e comes over and picks up the x. And then this would be calculator. So e to the negative 2 thirds. Zero point five one three. 
It's a log, so check it here. Just make sure it would stay positive. It's just X, so that's gonna stay positive, and I know it's greater than zero. All right, 22, again, just one log. I can't get it into exponential until it's by itself, so the first thing I have to do is divide both sides by three. Log base four of six X would equal three. Four picks up the three, so four to the third equals six X. Four times four times four is 64. 64 equals six X, divide both sides by six. X would equal 64 over 6, which are both divisible by 2. This would be 32 over 3. When I plug it back in, I just need to say greater than 0, which it would. So I can keep that as the answer. You don't need to convert to mixed number. You can keep it in proper as long as it's simplified. Twenty four has two logs on one side of the equal sign, so we're going to condense them first. Log of x times x minus nine because it's plus equals one. Log of x squared minus nine x minus nine would equal one. The base on log is what? Ten. So now ten comes over and picks up the one. I'd get 10 equals x squared minus 9x. And as soon as you see that x squared and that x, that's your hint you're going to have to factor. Get everything to one side. And factor x minus 10, x plus 1. Split and solve. x equals 10 and x equals negative 1. Then we check. The 10 would be fine here. The 10 minus 9 would give me 1. That's fine. So I keep the 10. But if I plug the negative 1 into here or here, I end up trying to find the log of a negative number. So I rule out the negative 1 as an answer, and I only keep the 10. Questions on that one? All right, 25, a little bit different this time. I've got a square root over log to the x. What does that mean? One half is the exponent. So this would be log of x equals log x to the one half. Then what? I can bump into the front. Actually, I would have done here. Let me see. Let's see if it works the same. Now what? So you can't, they're different, right? That's not the one-to-one -one property because there's something on the front. I can bounce them back and forth. I can divide by a half. It's just going to keep moving back and forth between the sides. Yep. You can do this. No, because it's, well, let's see. This 10, you could pick up this. So log, so 10 to the one-half log x equals X, no. You can't move the log until the one half is gone. So you can multiply by two. It's still not going to get rid of it. You're still going to have a log in the exponent and stuff like that. So the, the, I was curious to see where it would go if we did it that way. The, the right way to do this is get rid of the square root. How do you get rid of a square root? Square it. So if I square... I'm curious to see if we just kept messing around if it would work. I don't know. But this, this that way definitely does. So stick with the one that works. We're going to square both sides. And you could have done that like when it was raised to the 1 half. You could have done it then too because it would still get rid of it. So now I've got log x squared. The whole thing is squared. Equals log of x. So this whole thing is squared. Now I've got a squared and a non-squared, right? So what do I do here? I can push them both to the same side, right? You could two, two to the front would work, but then you can't pull out the log. 
So if I pull them both to the one side, log of x squared minus log of x, now I can actually take out a log and I'd get log of x minus one. And then you can split and solve this. So we're factoring with the logs. That's what makes this unusual. We haven't had to do this yet. Uh, I don't think there's, it, this, this is, it would be on the non-calculator part, which we haven't even finished, but I don't think so. Yeah. Combine them. No. Uh, because it's minus. Oh, yeah. But then you can't lose the x. Let me finish this way and then we'll do that. All right. So this would be 10 to the 0. 10 to the 0 would equal x. 10 to the 0 is what? 1. And this would be log of x equals 1, 10. 10 to the first equals x. And x is 10. I would just check to make sure these would still work in here. I could do log of 1 and I could do log of 10, so it's fine. Bella, you're saying from here, condense it into one log. x squared over x. Ooh, squared. Over x. You just have to be careful not to simplify that. If you simplify that and cancel out an x, you lose the x equals 0 answer. So you just can't cross out the x. Does that make sense? You could still do 10 to the 0, so it would be 1 equals x squared over x, and then you'd have to multiply by x, so you can't lose that x. And then you're right back to where you were before. Move everything to one side. Wait, did we lose the 10? 10 to the 0? Yeah, we lost the 10. I don't think that works. It doesn't because you lost the 10 and the 10 is part of your answer. So the difference is the squares on the outside. Technically on this, when we square it, we square the whole thing. Instead of just squaring the X, you're squaring log of X. So that's really log of X times log of X minus log of X. And that's why you can't condense it down. Okay. So the square root, I would just try to get rid of from the beginning. Get rid of it by squaring both sides. We didn't do any of these, right? We talked about them, but we didn't do them. All right, 26. You've got a log on either side of the equal sign, but you also have a number there. So I want to group the logs together. I want to move this log to the other side. So log 11x plus 9 minus log x plus 4 equals 3. Condense them. So it's log x 11x plus 9 over x plus 3 plus ugh x plus 4 equals 3. 10 is the base. 10 picks up the 3. Expand this. I think this is a question on your review. And then I would multiply each side by x plus 4. I'd get 1,000x plus 4,000 equals 11x plus 9. Subtract the 11x. 10. 9.89. Subtract the 4,000. And then divide both sides by 989. Negative 4.035. Well, but look what happens, right? You can't use it. Because a negative 4.035 is going to add to a 4. It's going to leave you with a negative, right? So you rule it out. If you, This would have been on the calculator portion if you do have numbers like that. Yeah. I actually think that question might be the same that's on the review. I need to look and see if it's the same numbers. No solution. If there's only one x and you rule it out, no solution.
All right, 27. We're back to kind of like the ones, yeah. All right, here we're back. The bases can't be the same. I mean, can't be changed to be the same, right? So what do we do? LN, both sides of your equation. So LN here, LN here. This bumps forward and this bumps forward. X minus 3 times LN of 6 equals 4X plus 1 times LN of 3. So remember I said these were like the hardest ones. You're going to see something like this, but if we keep practicing it, hopefully it gets more familiar. If you've got an X on either exponent, that's when you have to distribute. So Because I can't, if I divide by X minus 3, I'm just going to keep having to bounce that denominator back and forth. So if there's an X in an exponent on both sides, when you LN, you're going to end up distributing. So I want to distribute this. So I'd get X times LN of 6 minus 3 times LN of 6 equals, distribute this, 4X times LN of 3 plus 1 times LN of 3, so just LN of 3. Then I've got two terms with an X and then two terms without an X. I've got to group them together. So I'm going to, and it doesn't matter which way you go. Subtract the 4x from here and from here, or add them both, doesn't matter. And then add the 3ln6. So on the left side, I end up with x ln6 minus 4x ln6 equals 4x, nope, sorry, I moved that one. This is gone. Equals ln3 plus 3ln6. This should be a 3. Sorry, they shouldn't be the same term. 3. That's that one. Is that what it was? Uh, on the x, ln6, mm -hmm. it, that's a 4x. This should be the 3. That's where I messed up. That should be the 3. Yeah. So from here, right, you distributed the lns to both, and then I got the line that was in blue. And then I need to move the ones with the x's to one side and the ones without the x's to the other side. So I moved the 4x from the left to the right. You could do it in either direction. And then I moved the 3ln6 from the left to the right. Now I've got two terms with an x on the left, so i got to take the x out, and I get ln of 6 minus 4ln of 3 equals ln of 3 plus 3ln6. And then I've got to divide by everything except for the x. So now my x is isolated. And then we let the calculator do that whole thing. So keep the parent. If you're going to do it all in one step, make sure you start the parentheses. LN3. I'm going to close my parentheses because it naturally opens them. Plus 3 ln6, close my parentheses twice because it'll open them here. I need to close them here and then close them again for the numerator. Then do divided by, open the parentheses, ln, it opens this. We have to close it, 6 minus 4 ln, it opens this. We have to close it after the 3. And I get x equals negative 2.487. If you had extra time, you can check these, but you don't have to check these like you have to check the logs because my original equation doesn't have a log in it. Remember, I said, those are the worst ones. You're going to get them, but those are the worst ones. Those are not as bad because you just bump the exponent forward and then divide both sides by the ln of 6. It's the worst when they both have an exponent with an x. Okay. All right, 28. How do we start it? Subtract the L, like move it to the other side, you mean? Okay, you can. How else could you start it? And give you what? Just x. So I could do that. Minus times. What's the exponent on ln e? 1 equals 4. x minus 2 equals 4. x would equal 6. 
ln of e cancels to give you the exponent. So that's one way to do that, right? And obviously the fastest. The other way is condense these, right? I would have to move the two to the exponent on the e. So this would be ln of e to the x minus ln of e to the second equals ln of e to the fourth. I could condense these. So ln of e to the x over two equals ln of e to the fourth. Then ln of, this is both the same logs, log base e to the e x over 2 equals log base e of e to the fourth. Wait, how come I'm getting a different answer? Hang on. That would be 8. If there was an exponent here, if it said 2 ln of e to the third, what's that? 6. Because this cancels to give you this, this would be 2 times 3, which is 6. Okay, so be careful because people tend to cancel it and then add those or do something weird and it's wrong. Yeah. How do you know what to plug back in the If the original question has a log in it. This one's a little different because it was ln of e to the x. So I can take six and I can plug it back in. I could have taken a negative and plugged it back in there. But if your original question has a log or an ln with an x somewhere in the expression next to it, you have to check those. Okay, this is the last one, right? Yeah. Okay, what are we gonna do here? Did we do this one yesterday? Yeah? What would you do? Because there's more than one way to do this. Two could pick up the three over two. And it drops off, leaving square root of two x squared. Now what? Get rid of that square root. So square both sides of the equation. Three halves. Jason, stay with us. Jason. Thank you. Three halves times two becomes what? just three, so this is two to the third, equals the square of the square root, cancels that out. So I end up with eight equals two times x squared, divide both sides by two, x squared equals four, and x equals plus and minus the square root of four, plus and minus two. Yeah? So both answers work here. So as you start to prepare, obviously that's what to get you through the homework for, what are we on? Five, four, okay? But if you wanna start to do your review, you wanna kind of like, I'll highlight which ones are our calculator based and those are the ones I would start to do and then save the rest, save the graphing for next week and that kind of stuff. But there are, you add these questions. So I don't know the easiest way. All right, so first of all, we need two formulas. The first is PERT, A equals P times E to the RT. And that's for a continuously compounded one. So if it says continuously compounding, we use that one. And then the other one is A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the NT. And this, if it's, this is if it's a certain number of times a year. Um, I mean, like, yes, like you'll see continuously flat out certain number of times a year might say quarterly or weekly or monthly or daily that thing. It's not going to say number of times a year, but it would say that, but continuously will flat out say continuously. So if you look at the first one that's there, it says you invest $10,000 into an account being compounded. And there it is right there continuously, right? If at the end of five years, your account balance is $20,000, what's the rate of interest being earned? So what's different between these and what we did before is what we did before you had how much you put in, you had the rate, and you had the time, and you were looking for how much was left at the end. So we just plugged everything in and did the, and did the work, which there will be a question that's just like that. These are a little bit different because I now have how much I put in. So this is my P. I have the number of years, which is T, and I have the balance at the end, which is A. What I don't have is R. So 20,000 equals 10,000 
times e to the r, which I don't know, times 5, which is t. So now we've got, huh. that's not continuous. That's for the other one. So now i got to solve for r. What do I do first? If it was log base e, you would have it pick up. So this one's the other way around, right? It's got an e in the equation. So normally we ln, but before we can ln, we got to get e by itself. So I have to get rid of the 10,000 on the front. How do I do that? Divide. Divide both sides by 10,000. E to the 5r equals 2. And now we ln both sides of the equation. So ln of 2 equals, remember, ln of e cancels, giving me the 5r. And then you just divide both sides by 5. So they're not complicated once you set it up. It's just that we hadn't done them that way because we didn't learn how to do them that way yet. So r is 0.138, well, 139 if we round it. What does that mean in terms of percent? 13.9%. Go to the next one. If you invest $10,000 in an account compounded quarterly. Now I have to use the other formula. Or sorry, it should say you invest. If the interest rate is 5%, how many years does it take to reach an account balance of 20000 So this is again... My P is 10,000. That's how much I put in. Quarterly means that N is what? Four times a year. Good. Interest rate is 5%. What does that mean R is? 0 0.05. And 20,000 is the A. That's at the end. So 20,000 equals 10,000 times 1 plus 0 0.05 over 4 to the 4 times T is my unknown. Divide both sides by the 10,000 again. 2 equals 1 plus 0 0.05 over 4 to the 4 T. And now you've got two things that you can't find the same base of. So we LN both sides. Ln of 2 equals Ln of 1 plus 0 0.05 over 4 to the 4t. What do I do with 4t? Bump it to the front. So Ln of 2 equals 4 times t times the Ln, that's a t, not an L, Ln of 1 plus 0 0.05 over r. So the right is really just an expression of three things being multiplied together. I could take them in parts. I could divide everything by four. And then I could take that answer and divide by ln of one plus 1 0.05 over four. Or I could divide the whole thing at once. So I would do ln of two. Close your parentheses, remember, because it opens them. Divided by... Open the parentheses, 4 times ln of 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 4. Close the parentheses and hit enter. And I get t equals 13.949. And that would be years. Yeah, so I did ln of 2. Close your parentheses after the two. Divided by, open your parentheses, four. I open the parentheses to do times. Ln, it opens the parentheses. One plus 0 0.05 over four. Close them. You could close them again, but you don't even need to. As long as you open them after the divided by, it should give you the same answer. All right.
Try that last one, like add that on to what you need to do for tonight. So your goal for tonight is to finish the assignment from yesterday. If you did a lot of that assignment from yesterday, start the review. But if you've already downloaded the review, I'm going to highlight the ones that are calculator based if you want to if you want to come back to it. So by the end of today, I'll post it with the ones highlighted that are calculator based if you want to redownload. Okay. Okay, for this last one, it says you want to invest 100000 into an account compounded continuously. So there's that continuously again, which means per earning a rate of 0.05%. How much time would it take you to reach $1,200 or $120? $120,000. So we get A equals P-E-R-T. There's my A. This is my P. The rate is 0 0.005 because we have to move this back twice. So 0 0.005. And then the time is what we don't know. So 120,000 equals 100,000. E point zero zero five times T. So divide both sides by the 100,000. Twelve over ten, or one point two, equals e to the point zero zero five t. Now we're going to ln both sides of this equation, and I get ln of one point two equals this cancels, and I get just the exponent point zero zero five times t. Divide both sides by point zero zero five, and then do that in the calculator. So ln. 1.2 divided by 0 0.005 and it's 36 point oh, 36.464 years which seems like a lot of years but this rate is so small that that should make sense you can always check these two by plugging it back into this side of the equation so a hundred thousand dollars times e to the point zero zero five the t 36.464 years and if you plug that in it may not be exact because it's rounded but it should be close to 120,000 so I get 119 999.81 which would obviously be pretty close to 120,000.